Um, anyway, I know Britney Spears has been a, a, a controversial thing here lately with her conservatorship coming to an end. Thank God. I did put out two or three videos about Britney um, last year because, you know, I was, I was getting into what was going on with the conservatorship and her being imprisoned and, you know, I got more deeply into the family situation, her father, um, his alcoholism and how that would have affected Brittany and Jamie Lynn's life. Um, I know that Jamie Lynn has now put out a book. I know there's a lot of controversy going on that uh, between Brittany and her sister Jamie Lynn. Um, just all kinds of craziness going on. And it's like I can relate to Brittany in one way. That I know what it's like to have an alcoholic father. And I also know what it's like to be scapegoated to be the scapegoat of the family, to have everything put on your back, to have people kind of look over you, um, you know, and there's lots of information out there that allegedly Jamie Lynn was treated um, in a way better than Britney because Britney had to work all the time. Britney was their little performer while Jamie Lynn got to be the child, you know, um, and so I'll get all I'll get into some of the ins and outs in in future videos because it really you know it really hits home for me in a lot of ways the family situation the alcoholic parent um, the scapegoating going on the just so many different dynamics in that poor girl's life and Brittany's really a sweetheart she really is she's from down south so am I and. She's just got something about her soul. I think she did get lost along the way. Um, I think that Brittany was always looking for love and looking for it in the wrong places. I think sometimes it's really hard for a woman like her who is strong, beautiful, rich, talented beyond belief. Um, I think sometimes it's hard for a woman like that to find true love. I really do because there's a lot of snakes out here. There's a lot of people that just want to take advantage. And, and, it, and, and it makes you think, well, why would a woman like that have trouble? You would think men would just fall head over heels in love and just really want to be true to her and take care of her and just really be good to her. And that's just not always the case, man. It's just not always the case. They're, they're, it, to me, people who are authentic in this world and real are very rare. And so it can be difficult, and I'll tell you a, a number one reason why, is that a lot of men, not all men, but a lot of men are intimidated by a woman like Brittany. And they tend to look over the fact that she's a human with feelings. They look at her body. They look at her sexuality they look at her money they look at her power her fame but they forget a lot of men that she has dated um, they forget to look at her heart her feelings that she's you know again I say not all men but a lot of times I've seen a lot of cases like this when a man is involved with a woman that he's intimidated by that she seems to have everything. She's strong. She's powerful. She doesn't necessarily act like the damsel in distress. She's talented. She's beautiful. All these things. Smart. Um, a lot of men are intimidated by things like that. And it's very true. And, and you'll wonder why the hell they'll end up cheating. Yes, because... Some men, if they are not right within themselves, if they are not about their strong identity, if they are not comfortable in their masculinity, sorry guys, I'm, this interstate is so screwed up. If they are not, if they haven't dealt with their own childhood wounds, if they have them, if they've got shit going on and they are not where they should be as a man, 
oftentimes that is why men end up cheating and and we see it all the time you know this happened to Halle Berry this happens to some of the most beautiful powerful talented women in the world happens to men too but you know I'm talking about Britney here so I'm going with women and yes a lot of times when a person cheats on you it has more to do with their fucking low self-esteem it has more to do with they feel like a fucking worm in your presence you're too damn good for them you're too beautiful you're too powerful you're too sexual you are intimidating the shit out of them they may not tell you that but that is a lot of times why people go out and cheat and you'll notice a lot of times with certain men they'll get somebody uglier than you yes they will get with somebody who may not have as much self-respect as you they may not have as many boundaries as you they may not run their ship like you run it they might not have as much talent as you a lot of times people will do that because they've got to look for somebody less than because that's what the fuck they feel like inside fucking less than oh yes 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 that's why it's very important for couples to match up correctly on the right vibrational frequencies having both dealt with their childhood issues if they have them having both come to a certain level of emotional intelligence all people need to really work through those things before they get with somebody else because it just causes a lot of pain I'm not just saying it's men because Brittany did the same thing in her early life growing up with the alcoholic father growing up the way she did probably having codependency issues and self-esteem issues yes I know that's hard to believe on a beautiful talented woman like her but it happens all the time and so yes she did some of the same things with Justin Timberlake in that situation looking for herself outside of that relationship often people with low self-esteem or who aren't feeling good about themselves people who are codependent they're just not quite right within very young emotionally immature yes they will cheat they will do things like that so then when you're not around they have nothing think about it this codependency stuff I've been working through it a lot of my life and studying on it and going through it with other people think about it if a person is codependent if all they have is you if they make another human their whole entire world they don't have some kind of out identity outside of their partner hobbies goals um, things they do events they attend things they belong to a career stuff you know um, the ability to be alone sometimes if they don't have their own strong identity think about it when you're not around they have nothing now how dangerous is that shit when you're not around if a person's like that and they can't be alone for five seconds think about that shit and and it took me a long time to you know I would fool myself and think I could trust people like that oh it'll be okay no it's not okay if a person is really highly codependent it's really hard to trust them if they don't have a strong sense of their own identity and things to do and things they love to do and keeping themselves occupied sometimes and they just have to be with you every second or be with someone every second they can't be without a partner and that shit is really bad and think about it if you're not there with them they have nothing they're bored and what's that gonna lead to ring 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 hey wanna hook up I'm, I'm looking for somebody I don't have anything I'm so sad and lonely if you can't spend every second of your life with them they will try to take over your whole damn life there are some really severe codependent people out there and it's very toxic it's hurt a lot of people and I like to spread awareness and talk about it you know and I'm not saying Brittany didn't do some things okay because you know we all know that she and Justin Timberlake were together Brittany was very young and the rumor was that they split up because she cheated on him um, and in no way is this video to bash Britney or really bash anyone else my videos are for educational and entertainment purposes only I like to examine things uh, for the sake of learning for the sake of awareness and sharing knowledge um, I really in my heart I, I don't really care for bashing people and it's not about gossip for me I really like to break things down and examine and learn from these things um, and so 
Um, yeah, we all know what happened with her and Justin. And I'll just say, again, I think for a long time, Brittany was lost. I think she was codependent. Very codependent and looking for herself through men. And, you know, I've been with people like that in my life that hurt me badly. That it was because they didn't love themselves as much as they should. They were codependent and they were the type of people that couldn't be alone. Um, when you get involved with someone like that, that always sends an alarm bell off for me when a person says, I can't be alone. I can't be without a partner. I don't like to be alone. Okay. No, there's nothing wrong with that, but it generally sends up a warning sign to me that a person is possibly codependent. And codependent people can be dangerous in the fact that they may not consciously want to hurt you. They may not consciously set out to hurt you, but they will. They can. Because of the simple fact of if you're involved with someone who's highly codependent, who does not have a strong identity all of their own, who looks to their romantic relationships to give them their self-esteem, their self-worth, everything. If you get with a person like that, it's, it's always good to educate on what codependency is. I've been codependent before. I'm recovering from it. Um, I've worked on it a lot over the years. But if you get involved with a person like that, one of my partners was highly codependent. He could not be alone. Uh, there are people like that, that you can't even leave them alone for an hour. They need to be constantly entertained. They need to be constantly with someone. That is always a sign that something is missing inside of them. That is always a sign that they are not facing their own issues and that they are using other human beings to keep them distracted and that's not good that's toxic and it is unfair to the human beings they get involved with extremely unfair okay but hey uh, not to bash because a lot of younger people do this they're not thinking about it they're jumping from person to person to person thinking that a relationship is going to solve everything um, but I've seen codependency at its very worst where literally a person cannot be left alone for even an hour. And if they were, I've seen it with family members. I know people who personally have this going on. I've been codependent as well, but not to that extreme, okay? I was very determined to find myself, to not have to have someone every second and find my identity and self-esteem in another person. But I also had a lot of therapy. Okay, but yes, I've been close to people in the past that you literally could not leave them alone for even an hour. And if you did, the minute you were gone, they were on the phone with someone else. Somebody, anybody, talk to me, entertain me, let's go out. Might have been cheating involved, might not, but they always needed somebody. There are people that, yes, are literally terrified they don't want to be alone because they don't know who they are. They are a stranger to themselves. An absolute stranger to themselves. They don't know what their hobbies are. They don't know what their goals are. They, they, don't, know, they don't have any self-esteem. They have to grab onto someone else to get that. It is a terrifying and, and very hurtful place to be. I've been there before myself in my younger years and off and on. I relapsed back and forth into it over the years. It's been something, it's like an addiction in a way. It's something I've had to work on a lot in my life. So anyway, I think that Brittany had, was there. I think she was there in her early years looking for herself, even though she was this beautiful, multi-talented, strong, powerful um, person that had the world at her feet. Um, that's not always what it seems like. Um, you know, looking at that situation. She had things going on, and I believe that she, of course, began to feel like a piece of meat. Um, you know, she the family worked her, and the father had his battles with alcoholism or whatever, and however that affected their family. I'm going to dig deeply into that at some point. But that's kind of what I felt like Brittany was going through. She was codependent, and finding, even though she had it all, she really didn't have it all. 
okay and apparently I think I heard her say at one point she didn't want to go to therapy anymore or just she didn't feel like she needed that I don't know I know during the conservatorship that she did go to therapy for a while but what I'm getting at is I don't know if anyone ever took her to therapy as a child or told her that was an option or checked on that's what I'm getting at I don't know if anyone ever in her family or otherwise her entourage her team her managers I don't know if anyone ever just stopped and checked on Brittany's mental state you know sometimes you have to do that with kids I, I've raised two sons and especially boys a lot of days they weren't just gonna come home and offer up information hey mom here's how I'm feeling no absolutely not especially as they got older but I was aware I could sense you know and I would ask them I would pick them and and open up a safe space for them at least let them know hey I care about you what's going on with your day how are you feeling right now anything you want to talk about and I always left that safe space open because I cared about what was going on in their brain how they were feeling how their self-esteem was developing um, all of those things and you need to do that as a parent so you know I don't even know if anyone in Brittany's family mother father um, her her team I don't know if anyone ever stopped as she was growing up and really just looked at her like a person and said hey how are you feeling what's going on with you what do you think about this how do you feel about this and provided the safety for her to feel like she could open up that she could have choices that she could talk that her feelings were valid and important and that she was actually being seen I don't know if that ever happened for her okay it didn't happen for me within my family I had an alcoholic father I can relate um, and it's just so so important for children so I don't really know but when you grow up like that you know you've got all this going on and I just I feel like that's pretty much what she felt like is she began to get sick of it all now let's move up to the head shaving incident I believe it was 2007 I can relate to her as a woman okay she was going through troubles with Kevin at the time I think he had just split up with her or left her or was filing for divorce something was going on you know the little children were involved and all this crap is going on around Brittany okay the point that she shaved her head like I say she had all this stuff going on all these years she started as a child and she had been working ever since she had been a small child working and performing and her parents you know just go 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 um, and a lot of people see it like she was her parents cash cow like you know and I really think that Brittany began to feel like a damn piece of meat very objectified like even her own family didn't see her didn't hear her didn't feel her and that can do a number on your mind especially if you don't have people around you that care enough to say hey are you all right let's get you maybe we could go to talk to a counselor you know if you don't have that in in your if you don't have any of that in your support system and I don't then a lot of times young people will take it out on themselves they won't be very good at communicating these things they might be ashamed of their feelings they might not want to disappoint their family oh I'm sure within the alcoholic family dynamic just like I grew up in I'm sure there's a lot of narcissism going on the father had a lot of control you don't go against daddy um, just do what daddy says and everything will be fine now you don't want to let daddy down this 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 and this that is the dynamic that is how children of alcoholics are treated and taught lots of narcissistic stuff going on we'll get into all this later but you know I'm sure she was really carrying a lot and therefore naturally yes that girl wasn't crazy that girl was not crazy she was doing the best she could to cope with all of those things that had been going on inside of her and probably the breakup with Kevin was the straw that that broke it all men were not treating her right um, yes she had her patterns of doing what she did with men too um, but you get where I'm going with this this is a pattern that follows people and until they're able to just stop 
take a break, get to the real root of what is going on inside, issues that may have come all the way with her from childhood, get to the real root of her own self-esteem, her self-respect, build herself up as an identity. Yes, we have Brittany the gorgeous, the multi-talented performer, um, the, the rich girl. Um, we have all of that, but who? how does Brittany really feel inside about herself? How, how does she feel about her self-respect, about her self-esteem? Um, and I feel like that's what she really needed a chance to get time to get the roots to because we had all these patterns going on. So when she shaved her damn head, hell no, she wasn't crazy. I knew right then and there. That's classic. That is classic for a person who has been too strong for too long. They've been treated a certain way for too long. They are jammed up in their head because they're too scared to talk or they don't know how to communicate it. There's so many feelings going on. They don't know what to, to even say. They may feel guilty or ashamed to talk. Um, they may be afraid. Like when you grow up under an alcoholic father, even if he's not beating you or you're not worried about that, you are afraid. Yes, there's lots of fear when you grow up around an alcoholic constant anxiety and even Jamie Lynn talks about this okay now I'm not gonna get in the middle of you know what those two are doing the sisters right now I know there's a lot out there about it I'll get into it later but even Jamie Lynn has said I never knew when my father was lying about his drinking I had constant anxiety okay okay I think there's a lot more to the childhood of Brittany and Jamie Lynn with the alcoholic parent there's just so much going on in that situation. So when Brittany shaved her head, you know, you got to think about it. This girl has probably been taught from the time she was a wee tot that we don't go against daddy. Mm -mm. And so when she shaved her head, yes, it was definitely a move, an expression. It was many things at once to let the world know, hey... I've had enough. It was definitely a cry for help. It was definitely an act out. A lot of times when people of a certain emotional maturity or whatever cannot communicate their deepest of feelings, they cannot be assertive as they want to be. They might feel trapped. Or if they're going something that, through something that is just too, too much for them at the time, like her divorce, her breakups, Sometimes they will act out instead of be able to verbalize this, go and seek counseling, um, cope with it in a certain way. It really just depends on the level of emotional maturity. And it also depends on who you have around you. Do you feel like you have anyone you can even trust? And I don't feel like she did. I really don't. And so naturally I can see why she had no choice but to act something out than to make some kind of move. Um, but secondly, why she shaved her head. Think about this, you guys. Women, I've even done it before. I did this about 15 years ago. I used to keep my hair platinum blonde all the way through. And I had a lovely hairdresser. Um, she was just so wonderful to take care of my hair for so long. But it meant that I had to get down there regularly. I could never let the root get this long. I had to get in there regularly and spend time in that chair. And it was a long process to go from this dark to, to you know, the blonde. And I was also going through some terrible relationship problems. I was being so hurt um, in, in a relationship situation back then. There was nothing I could do about it. Um, it wasn't going to change. And even though I did have a therapist, at that time I had been taking a break from therapy. It was just one of those time periods in my life where I didn't really want to communicate this to anyone. I didn't really, I, I didn't, I couldn't even really find the words to communicate the pain I was going through at the time. And so I caught my hairdresser out of town and you know, with that platinum hair, you're not supposed to take it upon yourself to do anything to it because you can really fry your hair. The shit can fall out. I caught her out of town. Hair was platinum blonde. Long story short, I went and got a box dye. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this hair. I want to get rid of it. Um, 
I don't want this blonde anymore. I don't want to have to be a slave to my hair. I don't want people looking at me a certain way anymore. It attracts a lot of attention. Um, because my platinum blonde hair did. It always attracted a lot of attention. And a part of me thinks I kept it that color for years because of low self-esteem and insecurity issues over the course of my lifetime that I've had to work on. Part of me thinks so. Part of me thinks I just love that pretty platinum blonde. Okay, you know, but yes, I did do that. I went, got a box dye, put it right on top of that platinum, thinking I could just go back to brown and I wouldn't have any troubles. Oh, I had troubles. It turned my hair green in some spots. Um, it turned it a nice brown in some spots, but it broke my hair off and fried it off in some spots. And oh Lord, she had to take care of it when I got back. You are not supposed to go get a box dye and put it on top of any color treated hair that your hairdresser's done. <laughs> And so, it was crazy, but the reason why I did that, and I've also chopped my hair off before. Now, I've never gone as drastic as Brittany did and just started shaving it. Yes, that shit means business when somebody does that. But think about it, though. Women do this all the time. Brittany is not crazy. She was not abnormal. It was a little bit more extreme than a lot of women do, but think about it. The reason why I did what I did that particular day in that time in my life is because I was in so much pain that it provided me with an instant, some type of instant gratification that I could feel an instant change and, um, yeah, think about that. When, when you're going through that much pain and you feel like your life is completely out of control, it is something that you can control it is something you can grab onto and have some kind of control over you can get immediate results and it gives you some kind of relief from that pain and anxiety momentarily it is one of the less self-destructive ways to get some instant gratification think about it think about it and we all we all have had these experiences we've all done it in, in some form or another Women do it all the time. Uh, some women after they have a baby or some women after a divorce, you'll notice a lot of them cut their hair off, cut their hair really short or do some kind of drastic hair change. What is that? What is that? Okay. That's what I'm saying. Brittany was not abnormal. She was not crazy. It was a little more extreme than most women do, but I believe it was a combination of things. She got tired of being objectified. She got tired of being invalidated, not seen, not heard, but yet relentlessly pursued. Yeah, all of it at the same time, plus going through her breakup, feeling um, unlovable, probably her self-esteem was at rock bottom, um, and she just got tired of the whole shit, and instead of doing something even more drastic, at that moment, that was what she reached out to do that could provide her with some sense of relief and release from the anxiety and pain inside of her at the time and it was something that she could control she felt so out of control her family was controlling her for years and it really just started after that point that's when it really got started but you know think about it her whole life she felt like she didn't have any control of anything so yes that was a way she's like you know what what the fuck okay I can have some control over this shit. I'm going to make this move right here and now. What do you guys think about that? Now, where's your little blonde workhorse? Now, where's your little blonde um, sex? Someone for you to exploit. Where is she now? I'll get rid of her. And that's what she did. And that's exactly what I did to myself that day too. I was sick of it. I was going through all kinds of shit, being objectified, not feeling like I was being respected or loved properly, um, had my own self-esteem issues, codependency issues, anxiety issues, things were feeling out of control, I was in a lot of pain, and I went right after that hair, because it's a sudden change that you can control. When everything else feels out of control, and part of me felt that way too, I felt like, oh yeah, oh yeah. All you guys care about me for uh, is this blonde hair, and this is when I was a lot younger, is this blonde hair and, you know, some kind of sex appeal or some shit like that. Okay, well, watch this shit. Pfft, fuck that. I'll just fuck, fucking take that right away. Women begin feeling that way sometimes, and sometimes they act it out. 
So, you know, we're all on different levels of emotional intelligence. We're all on different levels of, you know, we all have different support systems. We all understand things differently. And so it's absolutely best if we can get more in touch with our feelings, what's really hurting us, what's really bothering us. Yes, it's definitely important to do that because those are signs of, but all in all, there's nothing wrong with cutting your hair. There's nothing wrong with shaving your head. There is nothing wrong with taking an action to refresh your life or have a dramatic change. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's not always a sign of distress. It's not always a cry for help. But, you know, it's good to pay attention to things like that and offer someone assistance if you can. If you see that someone's going through something, hey, offer them a safe place. Let them know they can trust you and offer them a safe space to open up, you know. Because people need that sometimes, and I really feel like that was what surrounding what was surrounding Brittany shaving her head. Of course, a lot of us know that already, but I just kind of wanted to touch on that again because it's important to me. Um, we, you know, if anybody who studied psychology even a little bit knows or been around you know toxic family or dysfunctional people or struggled with things themselves, mental illnesses or disorders. We all know to a degree that, just like little children sometimes, children cannot necessarily articulate their trauma, their feelings, and what's being done to them. They will act it out. They will go and hit another child, or bite somebody, or, you know, do something at school, or tear something up. Um, I was an abused child, and I acted out a lot. I could not articulate what was happening to me. I couldn't go up and tell anybody. So it's a whole it's a whole other vibe so yeah definitely and sometimes people might be grown they might look grown they might act grown and emotionally intelligent in every other capacity of their life and emotionally mature but perhaps when it comes to certain feelings they're not emotionally mature perhaps their emotional intelligence on that level suffers a little bit and they will act out that is generally what people do who are not good with communicating their deeper feelings and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. I'll do another part to this because there's a lot going on with the Britney Spears thing right now. I'm happy that she's free. I'm happy that she can get back to her life. I can't. I'm still processing that that actually happened to her. Right here in this country every under everyone's nose, I'm still processing that that happened to her. Um, but I'm just so happy. It makes me angry that they took that much of her life. But prayers for her um, to move on into peace and happiness and enjoying her life in the future. I'm so happy that she's out from under that. I will follow this up with another one. And, and, and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already done so because it helps my channel out a lot. And I really appreciate you guys being here with me. I'll have more for you very soon.